Thank you. Thank you. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. First, I'd like to thank the members of the Academy who voted for me. Oh, shoot. That's the wrong speech. <clears throat> the question I am often asked is, what has kept you coming back day after day for 20 years? Well, that question should really be, why did they let me come back after the first day? When I was assigned to work in the office, I protested that I had no business skills. But OK, if that's where you need me, I'll try. Well, my first task was to answer the phone. So I took a message, and I sent it to Leslie, the dispatcher, who came running back to me, waving the slip of paper, and said, Ed, I can't call this number back. You gave me a zip code. <laughs> well, I learned how to take a message, and now, now you can't pry me out of my little chair on the second floor. I see so many people here tonight who've been with God's Love We Deliver since the beginning, or nearly so. I'm sure what keeps us all coming back is the importance of bringing food and love with compassion and dignity to anyone in need. Those words sound great in a mission statement or for a sound bite, but I've also had the privilege to experience just about every aspect of God's love operation and I have seen those words put into action. I've been inspired by the staff and countless volunteers who always go the extra mile. For instance, during a blizzard, helping Ricky push his car out of a snowdrift, delivering to the far west side, then getting on the subway with Nancy and her little daughter, Pinky, who was smaller than the snowdrifts, to bring meals to the very tip of Manhattan, where we discovered that the elevator was out of service, so we had to walk up eight flights of stairs and back down. But those extra efforts enabled us to declare that even in the worst blizzard in 50 years, God's love was able to deliver to 80% of its clients, including to every single client in Manhattan. I took the very first meal to one of our first clients with an illness other than AIDS only to discover that there was police tape across the apartment door. He had died during the night before we could feed him. So when I hear Jim or Carol or Casey in client services trying hard to schedule the first meal delivery the next day to a new client, I realize it's not just an empty promise when we say we will deliver the day after you call. That is paramount to people who are ill. One Christmas day, I was doing deliveries with a real man who I'm sure had never eaten a piece of quiche in his life. <laughs> Our client, who could barely speak or move, struggled to stand up from his chair and with tears whispered that he didn't expect to get presents too. Well, when we closed the door behind us, you know it, Real man and myself were both in tears as well. If you've seen the 20th anniversary video, you'll remember my story of being stopped on the street. I was wearing my God's Love We Deliver jacket by a man who said, you saved my life. I was literally starving to death when you found me and brought me food. I didn't know what to say, I was speechless. Of course, this is all overwhelming, but like the masks of comedy and tragedy, the drama is often balanced by the humor. Like the Thanksgiving, when our client answered the door and was so disappointed to see me. <laughs> she had heard on the news that Joan Rivers was going to be delivering <laughs> Thanksgiving meals. So she was sure she was gonna get Joan. Well, I sucked it up, and I said, oh, I'm sorry, Joan can't be everywhere. I'm not as funny as Joan, but the turkey is just as good. <laughs> she didn't buy that. <laughs> she took the bag and she slammed the door. <laughs> <laughs> or the Christmas when we had run out of poinsettia plants to give. So ingenious Peter ran across the street to the empty lot where there were only scrawny Christmas tree tops left behind by the Christmas tree sellers. And he and Vivian 
and Leonard began decorating them with origami snowflakes and ribbons. So I in a true, the last shall be first scenario, those clients got a beautifully decorated little tree as well. Extra mile, compassion, dignity, not just empty words. On September 11th, I stood shoulder to shoulder in the conference room with Anne and Rich and Paul, watching one of the towers collapse. And then on September 12th, stood shoulder to shoulder with the same people in the kitchen making sandwiches for the first responders. Because even though the streets were cordoned off and we could not deliver, we had food, we had manpower, we had the desire to help. Once you've seen and experienced things like this, you simply can't not do it anymore. Sometime in the 90s, our inspirational founder, Ganga Stone, had buttons made that read, gratitude is the attitude and service is joy. Very transcendental, if you knew Kanga. <laughs> well, tonight I am proud to say that I am grateful for this award and for the privilege of being allowed to serve and in doing my little part. I have found great joy. Thank you.